The most important part technically on the third shot drop is use the exact same technique as your dink and visualize it as nothing more than a long dink. So in these rallies, uh, Justin and I will be just working on dinks from the baseline, which is one of the best ways to visualize your own third shot drop. There's my drop. Justin does it about like I do. I drop the paddle down and just lift it up and over. Very nice. On the technique, I like to think that the further back that I am, the higher my drop shot can go. I try to visualize the ball falling into the kitchen. I lift it up and let it fall in the kitchen. I'm trying to think of a nice, soft, high dink. Keep going. Very small backswing, very small follow through. I like how Justin's knees are so bent. Good try. And we'll just keep going. A few more. I'll take it. This is the simplest way to do your drop shots is to visualize them as long dinks, just like that. Again, we're not skimming the net, we're trying to let the ball fall into the kitchen. Oh, into the basket. That's all we're trying to do. Perfect. The other technique on third shot drops, more advanced, you'll see maybe 25% of the professional players do it, and that's to make your third shot drop look technically exactly the same as a drive. It's a little harder to drop, but some players will wind up and smack a hard third, or wind up and look like they're gonna kill it, but then do a drop shot. We're gonna demonstrate a few of, you, few of those for you super advanced players out there. So go ahead. Oh, I want you to do the same, Justin. Wind up, drop. Wind up, drop. Wind up, drive. Drive, good. Wind up, drop. This is harder to do, but you can see how effective it would be. This is not how I play in a game, but I'm actually thinking about it because I didn't know I was so good at it. Wind up and drop. Wind up, drop. Wind up, drive, very good. So those are the two basic third shot drop techniques that I as well as everyone can work on.